Hi everyone, it's Christina from Card Creations and More by C. Um, today I'm going to do a video with you um, on the mini composition notebooks that I've been making. I had a couple of requests for a video, um, and I also had a request for um, a video of my gift bag style card, which I'm going to try to make one for you this weekend if I get the time, um, maybe a Christmas themed one. So hopefully I can get that done too, but for now we're going to do these. Now I buy these mini composition books at my dollar store and they're three in a package for a dollar. So it's a really good deal. I found that it's actually much more cost effective to make these than to make the big ones. Um, I've been using mostly um, die cuts with a view. Um, either their mat stack or the big 12 by 12 pads and if you're using 12 by 12 sheet of paper you can actually um, make four of them from one sheet of paper and have fronts and backs and for my spines I just use my recollections cardstock from Michaels now the paper for the covers is four and a half by three and the spines are two by four and a half so to get started, what we're going to do is just, I start right along, I pretty much um, start right along the edge of this black part here. And I just do all four sides with my ATG on the front or the back, doesn't really matter, I guess, which one you start with. Just make sure I get it really well and that it's not overhanging too much. You want it like as close to the edge as you can really get it without having it hanging off. Then I just start right here at the bottom and I cut this slightly bigger than what is needed so I line up one of the sides perfectly and press it down really good and then as you can see I've got a little bit more than what I actually need but that's okay because I like to trim it off and make sure that it's perfect rather than trying to cut the piece of paper perfectly and then there's a little piece showing. So then I'm just going to flip it over right away and do the back side. Now I figured out you can make 30 of these with one roll of ATG pretty much from start to finish. Um, and also they end up, if you buy your paper pack from Die Cuts with a View with like a 40% off coupon or on sale for that price, then they work out to be basically 58 cents a piece. That's if you're getting your ribbon on sale too um, with the total cost. So it's not actually that bad. Now I'm gonna just see if I, I might have time in this actually nah. What I normally do is I normally go through three at a time or four however many papers I'm having and I'll get all the fronts and backs connected and then move on with that set of papers and then I'll do the spines and that sort of thing. So next thing what we want to do is trim off this excess. Now instead of using scissors because it's kind of a thick surface that you're cutting against, I found it just easier to use my X-Acto knife. So I usually start right up here with this one corner and make it rounded and I just kind of come off like that. So it's like that and then I come up here and I just start going right along the edge and I just try to go slowly and steadily right to the bottom then I do the bottom corner now as you can see on this one there is a little bit of an overhang actually I hope I'm not holding these up too high I always do that there's a little bit of an overhang right there um, so I am gonna trim that off too now occasionally Actually, out of like 70 that I've made, there's only been one notebook that I completely goofed up with the X-Acto knife because I cut the actual notebook by accident. So that's actually not too bad. I just think it's a little bit easier to get a very clean edge if you're using the X-Acto knife. So then I'm going to do the other cover, the same thing. And go straight, actually, a little bit closer is good. It's kind of easy with the X-Acto knife too when you've got your nice straight edge as a guide of where to cut. Okay. And sometimes you'll see a little bit of ATG kind of gets exposed on the edge and I just roll it off with my fingers. And then I round that one off. 
and there's a little bit overhanging right here which I'm going to slice away. Okay, so then now we have, this is actually our front, um, this is going to be our cover and then the back side and now it's all nice and trimmed up and then what I'm going to do is sort of take this spine and kind of start bending it and you want it to be even with the top and the bottom but also even on the sides so that you just get it and you kind of press it into place like that and then I take my ATG gun and I run some right along both edges and I only do the one strip on the edge and then what I do now which is sometimes with the ATG you might get a little away from the edge so whatever one of your edges looks the most perfectly done is what I put in the back because that one's not going to have ribbon on it for a seam then you just sort of line it up and then you get it pressed down really well now if you're using a very glittery paper ATG will act like it's holding and then like when you look at them a week later it didn't so then you would want to use like your tacky um, what is it the red tape or um, or you can use your score tape what I personally use for a really strong adhesive tape is this crafty power tape it's by 3L scrapbook adhesives this is extremely strong tacky it says it's super high tack tape so um, and these are $9.99 and I usually get them at Hobby Lobby when they're half off so for $5 you're getting 81 feet which I think is really comparable to score tape and you don't have to order it online I can't imagine that score tape is any more tacky than this and it has a little um, little metal thing here with teeth to help rip it off easier so I find that those last a really long time for me so now once you've got your spine done that looks good then we're gonna do our ribbon and what I do I just run the ATG right over the front right along the spine and the pattern paper so then it's good I cut my I cut this at like 16 inches you could probably do a little less but I would rather have a little bit too much than not enough to tie my knot nicely so I just kind of get it lined up and I do I bring the bottom part up towards the middle then I just turn it towards me and I just try to line the top part up towards the middle and then I just try to make sure that it's nice and straight and there we go and then I just sort of meet them in the middle and the ATG being there really helps it all stay then I tie it towards this end first and then then I tie the knot this way after that and then I just press it down really well and I take my scissors and I cut a little bit away so you really don't end up with that much ribbon that's not used and then you've got a nice little knot here and I take my lighter and just burn the edge off of it so it doesn't fray and that is that so it's really quick and simple and when you're doing like three or four of the same patterned paper um, it really goes quick if you just do all of them the same step and then move on to the next set of papers and do the same step so I was able to knock out 30 of them in three hours but that was my first time making them when I had to figure out like the sizes and exactly how to make them so after that they kind of move a little bit quicker for me but look how super cute that is and I'm gonna sell that for a dollar so it's gonna be like 42 cents profit I think at the craft show and 58 cents cost so if you have any questions let me know and hopefully you enjoy the video thanks bye